You were born in 1921. Yes, sir, you're right. And that makes you what today? Right. 96. 96 years old. Yeah, 96. I've been in August 97. All right. <laughs> Tell us your story. Okay, well, uh, I was born and raised in Middletown, and uh, I didn't graduate from high school because of the depression. The family was hurting, and I could I, I got a job in Elizabethtown. That's how I got down here at a uh, shoe factory. That was in 1939. Came down to work. So I got married in 48. And we moved down here, and I'm here ever since. Okay. <laughs> and I think I belonged to every club in town <laughs> <laughs> back then. But the Legion, my, I'm, proud, I'm the most proud of the Legion. At the end of it, we didn't have any money when we got married, neither one of us. We had a car. So we sold the car to buy the furniture to furnish the apartment. And we lived in this town for two years without a car. <laughs> oh my God, that was that was a. In the 1950, the state gave the any anybody was in the military, they gave them a bonus, and my bonus was the most you could get was $500. Oh man, I was rich. <laughs> my wife said, "What are you going to do with it, Jimmy?" I said, well, I'm going to buy a Cadillac. Oh. <laughs> you should have heard that. Ooh. Jimmy, you're, you're living in a $35 a month apartment, and you're going to buy a Cadillac. <laughs> so I did. I went to a Cadillac dealer in town. And the man said, oh, I'm sorry. He said, I only get eight Cadillacs. The cars weren't plentiful then. He said, I couldn't sell you one if I wanted to. Why don't you buy a Pontiac? Well, Pontiac, the name just didn't turn me on. <laughs> so I went down to Ford Garage. They showed me a book, and we picked a car. And I said, if that car's not here in 30 days, uh, I don't want it. I can't wait any longer. <laughs> so they said, oh, it'll be here. So about 28 days, I didn't hear from them. I walked down to the garage, and the guy said, oh, we just got it in. We're cleaning it up. You'll have it tomorrow. <laughs> I, got, I got that car. I rode through town, everybody I've seen, I blow a horn and, and wave with my hand, make sure. Your own little parade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, I, I couldn't have had a better wife. Yeah? Yes, we, we got along real well. <laughs> we didn't have any children. In 1950, a doctor told us that us two will never have any children together. So, of course, we all, we both started to cry. What are we going to do? We're going to adopt, or what are we going to do? We decided she had a brother living right down here, so, and he had two children, and he wasn't making it. One night he called me, called her, not me, but then he called his sister and said, I think I'm going to shoot myself. He said, she hand me the phone. Oh, jeez. I, I said, Eddie, what's the matter with you? <laughs> He said, oh, I, I can't get out of it, Jim. I said, go to bed, and then we'll talk about it tomorrow. Well, he did. And then the next day brought all these bills down and what have you. So we said, how many can you handle? So he, he, we, we took the car bill. We made the payments for the car for him. That We gave him some and a couple other ones. We said, well, we can help you with the children. They were, oh, we just loved them. <laughs> so every time, we were like the grandparents. Every time we could get them, we'd get them. We took them to the shore. We, we treated them like kings. <laughs> they didn't want to go home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when they come, when, and their mother came for them. The mother worked, come for them up the alley. I'm looking down the alley and up the street. <laughs> When they went home, we both took a, took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, we enjoyed the children so much. In 1939, I came down to work. I wasn't married in yet. I was only, I wasn't, I, would, didn't, I had one year of high school to go. I worked there in 1942. They drafted me from the factory. So I, I, I put three and a half years in the Army, 14 months in Europe. Anyhow, I came home and I went back to the factory. You know why I went back to the factory? Because I worked with all girls. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you like the I, I worked in a fitting room. <laughs> Six guys and all girls. Man, I was a king. <laughs> I stayed in the factory till 1950. And then I started thinking, 
Jimmy, you don't have any benefits. The factory treated me good. I made good money. Then I, I got I went up to the Homestead Air Force Base, and they uh, they almost had to hire a veteran. <laughs> they gave me, they hired me a job I wasn't qualified for. Mm -hmm. Was in a in a parachute department, sewing the parachutes <coughs> and cleaning them and things like that. So when they contracted the work out, they had six veterans. I said, oh, we can't lay off any veterans. If we do, man, we're going to be in trouble. We're around town. <laughs> so they found us a job. They had to reduce the job to fit us. That's how I got a desk job. I was a timekeeper. Oh, yeah? I hated a desk job. I loved the fire. <laughs> but anyhow, that's where the money was. So then in 1965, the air, air, air base closed. Well, they guaranteed you a job. They didn't tell you, you have to go where the job is. So my job went to California. Oh. And I thought, oh, I, I believe I'd love that. So we talked it over with my wife, and we discussed it. And she, oh, well, Jim, it's up to you, you know. Oh, ho. Oh. <laughs> so uh, they, they flew us out to see the job. And the job had a man out there. He, he had mostly women. He wanted a couple of men. He was guaranteeing me everything. <laughs> well, anyhow, I took the job verbally, and then <laughs> I came home. I should have stayed out. <laughs> I came home. Now she's crying. Oh, I don't want to move. <laughs> I said, why didn't you tell me? Well, we had a little house, and we just remodeled the kitchen. She had a washer and a dryer now and the, the modern things. And that was, I, I knew that was, <laughs> I knew that wasn't the real answer. So I said, is that right? Yep. Well, and I don't want to move away from the little children. <laughs> that was the main, main reason. So I went over to New Cumberland and put my resume in over there. And just by dumb luck, there was a New Cumberland, the Army. We didn't work for New Cumberland. We were tenants. And the more they were moving a, an outfit from called International Logistics from Washington up to New Cumberland. And the, my background had a little bit of something in there that they thought would fit in. So they treated me real well. And I retired from there. I was 17 years working over there. Mm. That's all. I didn't work anymore. <laughs> there you go. So in um, 1942, you were drafted into the Army. Yes. Um, was it something that you were looking, like, is that something you no, no, didn't no. want to do? No, no, no. It wasn't something I was looking forward to. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I was, I told you I was born and raised in Middletown. Mm -hmm. And all I knew back then, we didn't have a car, it was depression. We had a, we, we couldn't even, I think it was 14 cents to go to Harrisburg, and we couldn't go to Harrisburg too often. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, I knew Hershey, Harrisburg, <coughs> and Middletown. I didn't even know Elizabethtown back then. I, I learned a lot of what I'm trying to tell you. I saw the world. <laughs> and I, I met the real, real nice young men about my age. And I was very fortunate that they, uh, we worked good together. Only, I was in the, only ever in a hospital once. And, and that, they, they, from New Cumberland, they formed a troop train to go down to Tennessee near Nashville. That's where I had to do my training. They had a, two cars and a, and a food car in the middle. Well, anyhow, everybody that was on my car that ate it, that we all got tomain poisoning. Oh. <laughs> when, that, when that train pulled into that, to, to Tennessee, man, we didn't give a damn. We were sick as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so the band was there, going to greet us. Uh, I could, uh, I could see the uh, the band marching away, and and a red cross trucks coming. But then after after that, when we get out, we were going to join the 80th. They were just forming. What was the 80th was a World War One organization, and they we we just starting it down over again. And it's a camp like Indian Town Gap. And we get in this truck. Everybody was that good that day. Get in the truck. 
Now we're going down through the camp, and they stop at every corner, and then they call names. <laughs> Anyhow, then the guy could jump off. Then they get down, then they start running, come up. I'm still on the truck. And now, <laughs> and now I'm beginning to, what the hell did I do? <laughs> so we come up too, and then they call my name. And the best part about this was an infantry division, but the ones got off first. They were the fighters. We were the support. Oh, okay. Mm. Come up the other side was a uh, an, an artillery outfit. We, then we moved out of camp. We got on another troop train. We were going out to to the desert, Yuma, Arizona. That we we were going across Texas. And I never been that far in my life. <laughs> but anyhow, we're going across Texas. And every morning we'd get up. Well, we didn't have the priority. We had to get off and let the main trains run. Every time we get off, we had to get out and exercise. <laughs> and if every morning we get up, I said, for four or five days, I said, where are we? We're in Texas. <laughs> Next morning, we're still in Texas. <laughs> we took that train four or five days to get across Texas. <laughs> well, that's a big state. A big state. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, I saw Texas, but I didn't see much of it. <laughs> not, not the cities or anything. Then we got to get out in the desert. Yuma, Arizona wasn't big as Ralton, with, with nothing there then. But they had a, a training base for that type of fighting and stuff. So then I got to learn a little bit about the desert too. When the, before we had to, before we started our maneuvers, we had eight-man tents with these cots. When the sun went down. We couldn't sleep in them cots. It got so cold. I never, I never dreamed of it. I got so cold. What we did, fold up the cots, put your, put a, an overcoat or something down, or a blanket, and slept right on the sand. That was mm. fine. But, but when you get up in the morning, sometimes it was a, a snake. A snake in the yeah, sand. Yeah, a snake would cur <laughs> cur curl up and get oh, beside geez. you. Oh, I didn't ever thought about them being, being. Uh, Poisonous. I don't know if they were or not, but anyhow, <laughs> then we just chase them out. And then was, and it, when it rained on the desert, oh my God, <laughs> it rained. It, it, we're hiding under, hiding from the enemy in them ditches. It rained, poured, come down through that ditch for, it washed stuff down. When we got off the desert, we went to Kansas. Why we went to Kansas, I don't know. Was a, and the, the camp was Jim by name Phillips. Hmm. Well, we all as we did there was march and fool around. We, most of the time we did was on a shooting range, but we could have done it anywhere. But anyhow, we stopped in Kansas. Then from Kansas, we got on a they brought us into New Jersey, and we fooled around there till they till they get a boat in. I never saw the ocean till then. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> anyhow. We got, to, we fooled around there for a while, and then we, they got us ready. We were very fortunate there too. We went on the Queen Mary. I mean, we, I'll never forget the night before we loaded. It was supposed to be a big secret. I think everybody was. <laughs> I think and all the wives and everybody was a hundred miles was around there that night. <laughs> Let me go up the steps. Oh. Before, when it, before you went up, if you were 37 years old, I, I think it was 37 or 35. I happened to be a sergeant then. I had a couple. I had three guys who were over 35. They called them in the front office, and they told them that we're going overseas, but they don't have to go if they don't yeah. want to because of their age, and they don't think they could keep up with the boys or something like that. Mm. So, two of my mind. They decided they'd stay in the States. But this one old man from Philadelphia, he was 35, <laughs> his name was McKino. He was, a, he, was, he was an Oriental. For, he knew a lot about the ocean. When he was a younger boy, <laughs> he worked on a tramp steamer. Mm -hmm. And this tramp steamer would come into Philadelphia. And of course, he met a lady, and he loved her. And he, ju he, he jumped ship, let the ship go out <laughs> oh, loud. So he, he, then he, he became a citizen, but anyhow, 
I was a boy and he was, we called him Pop. So now we're on this ship, but I never saw a ship before. And, oh boy, you don't want to get sick. I, I said, no, no, Pop, I don't want to get sick. Everybody was getting sick. So he said, come up on the deck. We went up on the deck. We never went down to eat. We ate candy bars and anything at all. But he walked me around that deck. That's a big ship. Mm -hmm. And we slept up there. But the, the old man took care of me. So now we're going in, we're going to land in Scotland. And we hit a, in the North Sea, we hit a storm. I said, oh, Pop, man, now this ocean's not going to be good. Oh, yeah, yeah, boy. <laughs> he said, you know, calm down. And it did. We, we landed in, a, in, a, in Scotland, but the Queen Mary couldn't get in. In the dock, they had to take us off in smaller ships. But anyhow, Pop took good care of me. So and then we got, off, we got off at Scotland, and I love the bagpipes. Mm -hmm. Their bad pipes were playing, but it was a train station. A train was sitting there waiting for us. You get in facing each other, four people. And that train took off and took us into England, up close to the channel. We didn't have our equipment, so we had to march and fool around there for uh, I don't know how long. I didn't see much of England except up around the channel. But when our, our trucks and stuff came in, they came to the harbor. So the driver had to have a driver, an assistant driver. Well, I went as assistant driver, but we laid overnight, and then we got the truck. So that's as much as I saw the harbor. I didn't get to meet any, any beautiful English girls. <laughs> <laughs> I did meet one, just for one try. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> uh, that's all I needed with the English. One was enough. <laughs> but anyhow, then we, we crossed the channel. It was a moonlight night. It was just like an excursion. It was, it was, calm. It was calm. When we get when we but the, the invasion was over about two months. Well. I think 58 days exactly. But anyhow, when we got there, we, we pulled into well, one of them docks, I forget the name of it, one of the beaches. We pulled in, we didn't even get our feet wet. We put guards out and we went to sleep. The next day, General Patton comes down because we're going to be part of his third army. He comes down and makes a speech. I never heard a better speech in all my life. He, his, voca his, his vocabulary, swear vocabulary, <laughs> oh, he, he, he swore it better than anybody I ever met. <laughs> and the only thing I can, I don't want to repeat his swear words. <laughs> but anyhow, the only thing I can remember about that was, he, he said, I didn't bring you boys here to give your life for your country, he said. I brought you boys here to make them other ba 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 uh -huh. son of a bitch <laughs> give their life for their country. <laughs> we we get up, we're having something to eat, and they to, they told us don't sit together, spread out. Well, that was unusual, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, we spread out, and it's good we did because some shells came in. From that on, we we did what Patton told us to do. A lot of people didn't like him. You either liked him or you hated him. I liked him. The reason I liked him was he got the job done. He lost men, of course, but another general does the same job in three weeks. He loses the same amount of men almost. Patton was a pusher mm -hmm. <laughs> and a swearer. <laughs> did you ever see the movie Patton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He, did you see that line of trucks? Uh, uh, in the early part of the movie, there was a line of trucks. They weren't moving, and Jeff Patton comes driving up along the side. I was in that line. Were you? Yeah. Wow. No, not, he didn't talk to me, but yeah. our outfit was in that line. We got beside the British, only, and the British were fighting for years. They, had, they didn't have, they had hard carried trucks, and it was a rainy day. So we're trying to move an AR or two. Anyhow, with those hard tired trucks, they get out and block the road. So that's what caught, that's why we, so he comes up and he said, be ready to move, we're gonna move. He goes back and gets a tank, 
which was a bulldozer, one of my pushes their trucks out of the way, and we took off. <laughs> and that was the last I got beside the British. But I felt so sorry for the British. They, they were in a war for so long. Mm -hmm. we were, when we were beside them, they stopped the war. They didn't shoot no nothing. They get up, they had their tea and shook their blankets. <laughs> God's on the street. <laughs> <laughs> They're very proper, those British. <laughs> but I, I figured, well, they know what they're doing. They were there so long time. Yeah. But I was glad we got away from them. We were in for the night where our artillery was set up. And we got out up in the morning, and, and we were going to move. We moved a lot more often. The artillery most didn't walk, move every day. Sometimes we moved three or four times a day because we were part of a combat team. If the, if the three, 317 infantry moved, 313 moved with them. So we're getting out, we're in line. I had two vehicles. I had a Jeep and a truck. And anyhow, my, my position in the line was towards the back. So the word come, but come down, the, the captain wants to see Sergeant Phillips get to the front of the column. I said, oh, what the hell did I do? Uh -oh. <laughs> said, what did I do now? <laughs> so I, I, I told my driver, you know, pull out along the side. And so I get up to the command car. He motioned for me to jump in. So he said, Sergeant, do you know where we were last night? I said, yes, sir. He said, do you think you could go back there and look around? Yes, sir. He said, I said, what am I looking for? My map case. He said, I can't find my map case. I believe I left it lay. Uh -huh. So I, I get out of the truck, got my Jeep. I said, turn around. We're going back where we came from. Mm. So we did. And we walked, drove right up. We picked up the map case. Now I'm in the front. I'm not an officer, but here I am with a map case. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, on the way back, we got lost. Oh, and no. my Jeep, we made one wrong turn, and we turned into a little community and that there was no Americans in before. The Burgermeister comes out, the women come out with flowers, and I'm standing up there like a general. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I'm shaking hands. And finally, a, a little girl, I, I think I would estimate her about 10 years old, and she got close to me, and she said, the, the Bosch is in the barn. Oh, the Bosch is German soldiers. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, man, I was up starting to sweat. So I, I, we were all there talking talk with the Burgermeister, and I am standing up, and I, so I told my Jeep driver, don't panic, turn the Jeep around and head it out. Mm -hmm. And I said to Burgermeister, oh, we have to leave now. We'll, I'm sorry. And when I, when, when I get in and sit down in that Jeep, I told the Jeep driver, Tramp her down. Yeah, go. <laughs> so we get out of range. <laughs> but they, we, they never fired on us. So we get back, and I give him his hand. Oh, that was great. I found his map case. There you go. <laughs> My section, we had a, a Fort Observer is, is the, uh, the part of the artillery that goes in with the, with the infantry any time they go in. And you look out, and you draw in your old artillery whenever they did that. They did it quite a bit. I I had a, I had a see a fire three men, a jeep driver and two men, and then a lieutenant went with them. We're, we're going out. It was it was snow along the banks, and I, uh, I said where? And I said I think I thought I saw that bank move. Oh, <laughs> uh, finally it was when we when the Americans started wearing a white uniform. If we didn't know about it, they came out. I told, oh, stop, stop. <laughs> so they came out. They said, where are you going? We're going down here. <laughs> Lieutenant. He said, Lieutenant, what you hear down there is the Germans. <laughs> if he wanted to stop, just we'd have run right into him. Oh, wow. You got lucky a few oh, times. I've been lucky all yeah. my life. <laughs> I thank the man upstairs. Mm. I really do. Crossing the Moselle River was was my worst fighting. Everybody says the bulge, Battle of Bulge was. The Battle of Bulge was the worst because of the weather. But we were on a hill on the back. This is, it's not cold weather yet. We were up on a hill. And the infantry was down below, and two of my men were with them. 
and we, put, we laid a wire line to them whenever we could. They had a wire line, and the infantry is moving now. So in order to move, my men had to move with him. They tried to move, and most of the time we unhooked the wire and forgot about it. But this time they were trying to move it with them. And I guess my men were towards the back. Anyhow, one got hit. Now he's on the phone. I'm up on the hill talking to him, trying to calm him down. I went to the captain. I said, Captain, I'm, I'm going to go down there and get him. I'm going to go down there and get him. The captain said, oh, no, you're not. You stay right here. So I waited a little bit, went to the second time. I said, Captain, I have to go down. So he said, no, 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 no. I said, OK, I won't go down. I walked up in the woods, changed, to, and I just took off to down to get him. When I get, I fired a wire, and I got down. And by that time, the, the medics were there, too. So I helped to carry him up over the hill. So we got him up over the hill. They, they cut his, his shirt and stuff open. He had a little hole about this big. I saw men chopped in half and everything else. It never affected me. They shut down. I walked back in the, in the woods and threw up just because <laughs> I knew him so good. Yeah. It seemed like the bullet when it never came out because when they got him back to the hospital, they sent him back to the States. And they didn't send you back to the States unless, unless you, they had to. So, so that was the end of him to see if we'd be in with us. But when the war was over, we visited. He turned out to be OK then? Yes, he did. He, he seemed OK uh, a couple of times. He stopped down. He lived up around Erie or somewhere and stopped down. And I thought he looked good. The concentration, one of them concentration camps. Oh, we, we liberated two of them. I have some pictures, too. The people were so bad. When, when our infantry, we didn't go first. We followed them. When they, they, they had a tank or something, pushed the main gates down. And poor people, they didn't. They were walking in circles. They, they didn't want to come out. They didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they told us when we went past, they said, don't give them anything to eat. And, and, you know, I thought, man, I'd like to give the man a sandwich yeah. or something. I, I don't know, K ration or C ration. They, they were afraid it'd overeat and get to kill herself. Well, they were terrible. They, they, they were nothing but skin and bones. And I, I have a, some pictures of where he burnt them. Mm -hmm. And then they had a, they always have a big ditch. And just fill it out. Half of them weren't dead. The, the guards, when they know that uh, we were close enough, they they just give up and ran. Mm -hmm. and somebody told me most of them got shot. I was hoping they all got shot. <laughs> we ended it at the war. We ended uh, on a little river called the Inns River. It wasn't too far from, what's a big city in Germany? Berlin. Berlin. We okay. were about too far, two miles from Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> and we're down there, uh, sitting on this river, waiting and waiting. We're, we're supposed to meet the Russians. So we waited and waited, and we sat there. And then they sent recons out to see where they were. About two or three days they showed up. But anyhow, Patton was pulling his hair out. <laughs> we, we could have taken Berlin. But I think that was a political deal. I think they already had Berlin split up, mm -hmm. so they didn't want us to take it. But that was that's where I ended in the war. It was then we moved into uh, to Austria, right on the German border. When the war ended, a little we moved into a little town called Autobahn. I never saw such a beautiful church. I couldn't figure out how the people could support it. It's a tourist trap now. Oh. We went back in '89. They have a, they, they have the, uh, the church has parking lot now, mm -hmm. you know, for tourists and buses. It was a nice, a nice little town. It wasn't uh, right on the border of Germany. Well, I, I guess Audubon was in Germany. We were here in Austria, and 
I got a pass to Paris. Uh, this is going to end the story. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what happened was, <laughs> we um, our outfit got shot up so bad. I don't know what month it was. We we, we used to get a, a week or two off, and this time they're going to give us three weeks, and they're going to get more men and new equipment and stuff. So anyhow, then they said, well. They're getting some little towns around that give passes. They're going to have go to Paris. But anyhow, we rode a, a truck for hours to get to get into Paris. But I'm sure glad I went. Mm. There, there wasn't nothing to eat though. No. <laughs> Not much. Mm. Well, what we did because the, the military took over a big hotel downtown, a beautiful big hotel, uh, right downtown Paris. But Paris was blacked out, <laughs> no lights. <laughs> so we got into this hotel when truck parked. We get in. How they got our names, I don't know. But anyhow, we walked up to the desk. Oh yeah, Phillips checked him off. Said, "Now go next door and strip down bare naked." <laughs> 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 so so we did. Then then we stepped next door, and he had. Clean clothes for us. <laughs> Two suits, underwear, and uh, I don't know how they got the size, but we yeah. we didn't look like bums. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fine. Then we went. We got a room, a shower, a bed. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't, we used to get a shower and take in a truck five minutes. Three minutes to wash and two months to rinse. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, this guy was in my room with me. Said. But what are we going to do? I said, I don't know what you're going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in that shower till, till I get tired of it. <laughs> then I'm going to get in that bed, and I'm, I don't care if I sleep the whole three days. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, he said, OK. So then we went to bed. Finally, he gets awake. Hey, don't, don't you think we should do the town? So we get dressed. We're doing the town at night. We weren't allowed to have any rifle, no pistol, no nothing. We went to first exit. Oh, man, that looked beautiful. They had a doorman. He said, oh, you boys aren't allowed in here. Oh, why aren't we allowed in? He said, this is for officers only. So we started telling him, we rode that truck. We, man, we need a drink. We haven't had a good drink for months. We talked enough. I guess he got tired of us talking. <laughs> so he said, go in and tell the bartender that I sent you and get the, whatever you want, the best drink in the house or beer, whatever. He said, and then get the hell out of here. <laughs> so we did. We had one drink. We did what he told us. So we walked another few blocks. We saw another exit. So we went there. Well. Now, this wasn't quite as plush. It was for everybody, full of all kind of. So we went in there and then, and then we had as many drinks as we wanted. <laughs> and of course, we met two pigs. <laughs> they were waiting for us. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> so we're drinking with them, and now we're hungry. We said, "Boy, we're hungry." Well, they knew where to get some to eat. So we walked a little more. We went in a big place. We went down a cellar, and we had some drinks. And of course, we had the girls. You know, you got no menu. You only had one thing to pick pick from. You you got a, a rabbit. You got a half a rabbit, and a potato, and something else. And they, you know, they didn't have coffee. I don't know what we we're drinking. But anyhow, we're eating this half a rabbit. And I'm three quarters drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I get, but I wasn't dumb. My friends, we, they were eating alley cats and everything. Oh. And I swear to the, this day that half a rabbit was in a half an alley cat. Oh, no. <laughs> How I, what, when, uh, half a rabbit around here, well, get to the tail, it's about this big. Mm -hmm. This was this big. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, that. Then, then we left there. Now, where are we going? Well, the girls knew a nice little place. So we went in the, up, I could see our hotel, the little hotel. Now, we're going up the steps with these two ladies. And this guy, somebody hollered, happy humping to you, Yank. <laughs> 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 and 
and, and, and here, here, and here he is. He had a couple of teeth out. He just smiled, and some GI told him that. <laughs> well, I had one room, and my friend had another room. But anyhow, I have played around with this lady enough. I, I wanted to go back and get in that bed. But anyhow, I, I, I told her, I'm, I'm done. Give her some money, whatever she wanted. I went over and knocked at his door. He said, I told him, hey, whatever his name was, Joe. I said, I, I'm, I'm done here. I'm, I want to get back and get in. Well, I'm staying here all night. I love this, I love this lady. <laughs> so here I am, all by myself, in a dark town. And the only good part, I could see this big hotel. I'm walking in the middle of the street. I, I made it. I don't know he came in, but I don't know what time he came in. But then the next day or two, the, uh, the Red Cross and the Army, they had tours for us and everything. We saw a lot of Paris, took the boat in around. But, but that's, just think if I would have never gotten the Army. I wouldn't have seen all this good yeah. stuff. <laughs> I get discharged. They discharge you by points. And I don't know how they figure the points, but I know this. The only badge I have, this one here, got me five points. Okay. And the rest didn't get me nothing. <laughs> but anyhow, I was on a second truck that left, that left, our, left to get, get a boat home. But anyhow, then I get home. A friend of mine was home. Well, he had a steady girlfriend. I didn't have any. So I, he said, well, well, what are you going to do tonight? I said, I'm going down to Blue Room where the girls hang out. <laughs> so he, I, I said, well, tomorrow night Betty and I are going to Hershey to a dance. He said, I said, Bud, I don't think I could go down there and grab a girl overnight. <laughs> I, I said, I, he said, well, don't worry about it. He said, I'll pick you up tomorrow night, and my girl will, will bring a friend. So, so she brought my wife. <laughs> it turned into That's your wife? Great. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, that was a blind date. 